Take heed what you hear. Yeah, well, some things you can't avoid hearing them. You may be at the workplace, you know, and you hear there's things you hear you'd rather not hear them. But, but when you got when you can control the circumstance and you can decide what you're going to hear, yeah. yield your ears Amen. to God. Mm-hmm. That's a member. It's a member. Yield your ears. If some, if God's speaking some way, pay attention to what that's be, what's being said there, Amen. and cl- shut off your ears and what else is being said. And I know by experience that you can, you can become a master at this. You can become a master at shutting things out. You can work right in the middle of it and just shut you. Maybe you hear the sound going on, but I tell you, you can, you can master this. Take it and render your ears to God. You can be more sensitive and have a table prepared for you in the presence of your enemies. While all a bunch of stuff's going on that would personally, if you paid attention to it, would irritate you. See? Yield your ears. How about that? How about your mouth? The tongue no man can tame, but it doesn't have to remain untamed. God can tame it with the mouth. Confessions made unto salvation. That's what Romans 10, 9, and 10 says. With the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. So yield your mouth to God. That uncomely speech, so don't let it come out of your mouth. Sometimes you have to lay your hand on your mouth. Job said, I'll lay my hand on my mouth. Sometimes you physically have to do this mm-hmm. to keep it from erupting. At least I've, this has been my experience. I have to physically restrain myself from reactions. Mm-hmm. Sometimes when you're alone, you may something pop out. Well, just yield your mouth yeah. to God. How about your feet? <laughs> Make straight paths for your feet. Mm-hmm. Where, where, about where you go? Do you, if you choose to go in depraved places, does it sur- surprise you when you have are faced with things that are very, very disconcerting and very, very debilitating? If you choose to go in a place like that, watch where your feet carry you. They're on your, they're on your legs, you know. Yeah, that's right. They go where you you can determine where your feet go. Amen. So I know sometimes that Jesus told Peter, someone will carry you where you don't want to go. I was speaking of his martyrdom. Mm -hmm. See, but where he had a choice where he went. Went the right places. So that's important. Amen. People that have defected from the Lord almost invariably have at some point started going to wrong places. Looking at the wrong things. Hearing the wrong things. See, give your members. Now, how about your mind? Mm -hmm. With my mind. I myself serve the law of God, Romans 7, 25. How about your mind? Give it to God. Give your mind to God. Let's have done with simplistic religion. Yeah. This irritates me when people are, are dumb about spiritual things, but they know they can rattle off baseball and football scores or, right. or yeah. some kind of chemical yeah. formulas or there's other fields of knowledge. They can just spout all this information, but when it comes to the things of God, they want to be in kindergarten all the time. Yeah. You know, give yeah. your mind to God. David once said, how numerous are thy thoughts toward me? He said, if I should number them, I could not count them. I have so many thoughts that come to me from God. I can't begin to tell you how many of these thoughts I lost because I didn't write them down or something. They were so numerous, I couldn't, I couldn't keep track of them. Boy, that's a blessed experience. I don't mind telling you. I'd rather have a bushel of thoughts from God and not be able to retain them all rather than have it just once every year or so have a couple of around Christmas time or something like that have a couple of thoughts of God give your mind to God how about your hands lifting up holy hands without fear and doubting without wrath and doubting First Timothy 2 8 how about your hands what do you do what do you do with your what do you do with them say well you know I've got an earthly job I work with it. well work for God amen amen don't, don't think of your stand. If you do your best for God, it'll you'll stand out. Don't worry about this. You will. This was a milestone in my own life when I was a young man. And I'd worked for some people that weren't the, like they weren't pleasant people to work for, right, frankly. They were they were more akin to skunks and lions and people like this. Then it dawned upon my spirit one day, wait a minute. I can work for God. And so you work for God. You use your hands for him. Even when Paul was a tent maker, he said he provided for those that were with him. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, how about, that must have been a humbling experience, huh? 
be laboring along with Paul and he's earning your living for you with his hands? Did you stop to think about how humbling that would be? That's what kind of man he was. He, why? He gave his hands. He gave them. He gave them to God. So yield them to God. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, James said, James 4, 8. <laughs> You're doing some stuff you shouldn't be doing. Stop it. Mm -hmm. See, yes, well, amen. Just, just take it for what it, what it says. Mm -hmm. And how about Hebrews 12, 11? How about this for yielding? It says that chastening is not, does not seem pleasant for the moment, yeah. but afterward it yieldeth. The peaceable fruit of righteousness. Mm -hmm. So let it let chasten do its work. That's right. If the Lord has to give you a whipping, don't be moaning and groaning about it. Mm -hmm. Take it. See what it produces. Mm -hmm. Amen. God, God doesn't chasten you to leave you hurting. That's right. That's not why. Sometimes that's you know there was a it was an age with children. There's only one kind of language they understand, and it's pain. And when they're little, you know, thank God you grow out of that. Well, at least you should grow, should grow out of it. But there's a, a certain age that that's the only thing they understand. With some believers, that's all they can understand. God's got to heat up the fire and make life miserable, or they just don't hear. They don't pay any attention. But if you are sensible about it, chase it always yields the peaceable. Fruit of righteousness. So you won't grind your teeth because, well, I've got to be righteous now. You, it's peaceable fruit of righteousness. Well, you can see the significance of yielding. So yielding is associated with growth. It's associated with fruit bearing. It's associated with worshiping God. It's associated with divine use or utility, of utility to God. God can use you in his great work. Now, there's grace to do this, to yield. There's grace to do this. You have, if God says to you, you have a withered hand, and God says, stretch it out, yield. <laughs> stretch out the withered hand. So you say, well, I've, I've got to make a lot of changes before, before I can do this. No, if he says, stretch it out, stretch it out. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yield. That man is laying by the, on the on pool of Bethesda. Mm -hmm. The Lord said, Pick up your bed and walk. Mm -hmm. He had to yield. That's right. He had to yield to that word. As soon as he did, he was able to get up and walk. Amen. Now, it may sound like an oversimplification, but if it is, it's just because I lack the wisdom to say it right. But the moment you decide, I'm going to yield to God, you'll be able to do so. Amen. Amen. That's because there's another factor beside your will. There's another factor in here, and it's God goes to work because he, he's looking for somebody whose heart is perfect toward him, who's ready to yield. He's looking for people like that, and he will come to their side. So the selfless, you see, the selfless nature of the kingdom of God should be apparent to everybody. Yielding presumes that you're not the main person, you're not at the center of things. See, just the concept itself promotes that idea. And it takes place really when things are seen as they really are. Mm -hmm. you, you can yield out of fear. I understand that. And there's a, there's a place where this, is, uh, where this is legitimate. But it can't stay that way. This, all, this has to do with beginnings. It doesn't have to do with maturity or God doesn't intend for you only to be moved when you're afraid not to mm -hmm. not to move or only to yield when you're afraid not to yield that I understand that there's a time when that does happen but this can't stay that way this is this is not the ideal situation and God can put you where he can put you down at the bottom of the sea where there's only one you want to get up out of there there's only one alternative the fish is going to lay down there in the bottom of the sea and you're going to stay in there with seaweeds wrapped around your head until you see the issue as it is and say, salvations of the Lord, and help it comes. Amen. That's the way life really is. Mm -hmm. yeah. I admonish you in the name of Christ to yield yourselves to God. He sent Jesus. I mean, this is, in, this is embalmed in Scripture. Mm -hmm. He has sent him to bless you. So that's, Jesus did come. That's, he comes a second time. He's not coming to bless everybody the second time. But the first time, that is why he came. That's right. 
to bless 